Hey guys, Technarts are here back again with another video. As I'm a Pro Max guy, I always had the fascination with the mini series. So eventually, I had to get it to try it out for myself. And here are my thoughts on the iPhone 12 mini. The form factor is the thing I very much love about it. A small smartphone that is easy to play with in one hand was a dream of mine since these days companies were introducing huge phones. It's not that my hands are small or anything, I can easily go through my iPhone 11 Pro Max one handedly. I have been using the 12 mini since December 2022 as my secondary device. It is a 64GB variant in black color. When I got the 64GB variant, I thought it was enough but now I need more storage and will upgrade soon. It was released in October 2020 alongside the 12 Pro Max. The sales actually didn't turn out to be great. It has a 5.4 inches Super Retina XDR OLED 60Hz display with 625 nits of brightness and ceramic shield. Ceramic shield is not very scratch resistant, so I suggest you use a screen protector. The screen resolution is 1080 into 2340 pixels. The display supports 4K content on YouTube and the experience is surreal. The small size is the thing that keeps me back from consuming content on it, otherwise the display is really good. The font from both sides of the notch is misaligned. See the difference side by side with my 11 Pro Max. The touch response is quick and I can even type fast without mistyping. The weight of the Mini is just 135 grams and it really feels handy unlike my 11 Pro Max. Before the 12 Mini, I had the iPhone 11 as my secondary device. The only thing I miss about the 11 is the rounded edges. I personally don't like flat edges. I have had the iPhone SE Gen 1 and the flat edges on both are different. My hand hurts after holding the 12 Mini for longer duration. There are rumors that the iPhone 15 lineup is going to be introduced with curved edges and that's good news. Call quality and network reception is good. I have experienced call drops here and there but very infrequent. It is a 5G enabled handset so if I am in a 5G city I can have access to faster internet. But it takes a toll on the battery and also heats up the device. Not recommended for 5G usage. Unlike 4G, the 5G network is heavy for the processor and the battery. I have recently installed a second SIM on my iPhone 12 mini which is in the form of an eSIM. After this I have been seeing a little bit more battery drain. So it means that dual standby does come with the cost of some extra battery. At the heart of the 12 mini is the Apple A14 Bionic paired with 4GB of RAM which makes it a beast in such a small form factor. Throw anything at it and it will never fail to impress you. The performance is top notch. But there are two reasons that I don't get to use that much of power out of it. First, it is my secondary device and second, the device is small in size to do much out of it. The small size issue I am saying is because I have the habit of huge screens. So I might not be able to do my work as efficiently on the mini as my Pro Max. But this can be different for everyone. The iPhone 12 mini comes with a 2227mm battery. The smaller the form factor, the smaller the battery capacity in it. The battery doesn't get me through the day even with light usage. I make calls, text on WhatsApp, scroll through Instagram, upload YouTube shots and use Twitter. Oh and if you haven't followed me on Instagram and Twitter yet, the link is in the description, go follow me now. I surf through the internet, listen to music sometimes etc. Approximately 2 hours of screen on time is what I usually have on it and at the end of the day I am left with a red battery that is 10 to 20% juice left. It has also died me on a couple of times. The battery life is worse on the 12 mini. It supports 20 watt PD charging but it is usually charged between 9 watt to 15 watts. It is fully charged in 1 hour and 30 minutes easily. It charges fast enough and also drains fast. I cannot think of using it as my primary device. The dual camera setup on the back of it consists of 12 megapixel wide and another 12 megapixel of ultra wide lens. The picture and video quality from the camera is stunning. The night mode adds more to it with good low light shots. I shoot my reels and YouTube videos with it. It supports Dolby Vision HDR video up to 30 fps. When you see an Instagram reel and its brightness goes up, yeah, that's when you know it's a Dolby Vision video. The front is also a 12 megapixel wide sensor and both front and back cameras support 4K at 60 fps videos. The front camera is decent, here are some samples, you be the judge. The 12 mini is a great device for vloggers but keep in mind to at least get 128GB of storage. The face ID on this is really quick, safe and accurate. If I wanted to upgrade a thing on my iPhone 11 Pro Max from the 12 mini, it could be the Face ID. The Face ID on my 11 Pro Max is damn slow compared to the 12 mini. It rarely does disappoint me unlike the 11 Pro Max. 
The haptics are not very strong, yet I haven't missed any calls when it's in my pocket. When I visited local shops near me for accessories for my 12 mini, there is not much to choose from. I am currently using the iOS 17 developer beta on it. So should you buy the iPhone 12 mini in 2023? You cannot use the 12 mini as a primary device in 2023. The 5G does heat up the iPhone and can kill its battery just in couple of hours. The only people who can think of buying the iPhone 12 mini are the ones going to use it as a secondary device rather than a primary. The ones who are Android lovers but also don't want to miss out on iOS. The ones who want to experience the and enjoy the small form factor of the 12 mini. For others, please keep the iPhone 12 mini, you won't miss out on so much. So here and my video, this was my perspective on the iPhone 12 mini. Drop your queries in the comments below and the relevant ones will be answered. See you guys in the next one, Tech Nutso, signing off.